Hello and welcome to the Z Hut. Today I would like to show you how you can build your own Bluetooth controlled camera shutter release. Now you can go on eBay and places like that, Amazon, and you can buy wireless shutter releases. But uh, one of the biggest problems I have found with them is there's usually only a couple different frequency settings on them. And if you actually get somewhere where you're using this, and there's a lot of other people using cameras, you might actually run into a problem now. That is the least of the worries, and I didn't even build this because of that. The main reason I built it is, well, I like to build things. Two, I can customize it the way I want it. I don't have to just buy something and I'm just stuck with how it was made. So what I've come up with is I've made an app that works on any Android device and it connects to your camera. Now I have my flash set up here and my flash and my camera both use the same connectors. Um, and having the camera here you wouldn't really be able to see anything. Um, by, by having the flash you'll see when I activate it you'll see the flash being triggered. But uh, yeah, normally you'd have your camera hooked up, but for this tutorial, I'm just using my, my speed light here. Now this is the controller itself right here. And I have a speaker on here, and this is optional. And we will get to looking at this here in just a minute or two. We're going to take a look at the app here and demonstrate it working first. And then we'll look inside the box, and then we'll go over to the computer, and I'll show you the schematic. And then we'll take a look at the, uh, the microcontroller code. And I'm using a um, Arduino Nano for this project. Uh, you want a small Arduino. Uh, if you tried using the Uno, it would never fit in one of these little project boxes. So, okay, before we get into looking at how it's built, let me just demonstrate it working. Now, I've opened the app up. First, we've got to connect to our Bluetooth device and select Connected. And then you hear the app actually says connected. I hope the, uh, the microphone picked that up. But once the app connects, it says connected. Now we have the take picture button. And we have a delay timer. Now what this allows us to do is if you were trying to do like a selfie, this will give you up to 10 seconds of delay after you push the uh, take picture button before the camera will be triggered. And it's displayed on the screen in uh, microseconds or milliseconds. And it's zero all the way to 10,000. So we got a 10 second delay. And you can use the slider and set it anywhere you want between there. And it moves in fractions of 100. So there's quite a bit of different settings. And of course, we got a disconnect button. So you can disconnect from your Bluetooth when you're done. All right, let me set it to about a second delay. There we go. And take picture. Oops, did my flash shut off? It didn't go off. She might have unplugged on me here. Oh, let me try that again. There we go. Yeah, it's been sitting here turned on for a few minutes, not activated, so I had to it shut it, powered itself off. We'll try it again. There we go. Hopefully you can the flash is showing up on the camera. But then also, hopefully you could hear there's a tone, and that's the speakers for. Because if um you're taking using this outside, you're not using a flash, and you're using like the 10 second delay and hit the take picture. I got it nine and a half seconds, so it'll take a few moments here. But um instead of having a count in your head and just guess after it's taken the picture, and there it goes. It makes an audio tone after it takes the picture so you know you're done and you can go move your camera or take another picture. Now this app is completely free. I designed this myself. <clears throat> I did all the programming on it and I designed the programming in the circuit that's in this little uh, shutter release trigger box here. I'm gonna go ahead Turn the flash off and disconnect it. We've seen it work a couple of times, so I think we can disconnect it. Disconnect, and I hit the disconnect button and disconnect, and then we can just power off 
our Android device. Get that out of the way. Now, uh, you, like I said, you could use this with a tablet or a phone. It just has to be Android. I'm going to zoom in a little here so we can see better. Now, um, you can power this off anywhere between uh, 7 volts and I think it was 15 volts is the max. Yeah, you had 7 to 15 volts. Now, I'm just using this little battery pack I had laying around. But um, I have ordered a rechargeable 9 volt battery and I don't have any 9 volt batteries at the moment but then you can use one of these and in place of this con connector here this is going to run in and I'm going to have a little 9 volt battery clip on the side and that way I can run this battery operated. Now also to mount this um, you're going to want it most likely on the tripod just below the camera and uh, one way to do that, this is called a bicycle mount, and you can find these online for under $5. And it's made to attach to handlebars, and then it's got your, uh, your threads here for most of your camera equipment. So what you do is I'm going to be, I've already got the pilot hole started, but i got to finish, drill it out to the right size and then tap it so I can screw this on here. And then I can attach it just under the camera on the tripod. Optionally, if you didn't want to go that way, if you're not going to be using a flash with it, you can get one of these. It's a hot shoe adapter, and it's the same threads. So either one would work, and that would go on here, and then you put it on top of your camera under that place where your flash would go on your hot shoe. And these are real cheap. I think I paid $2 for this shipped. Uh, I ordered it overseas from like China or something like that, so it did take about two weeks to get, but... All right, well, let's open this up, and I'll show you what it looks like on the inside, and then we'll get over to the computer and take a look at the schematic, how the circuit's built, and then we'll take a look at the, the sketch for the microcontroller. Now, currently, like I said, I this will only work with Android devices. I have actually been searching on eBay and I'm going to be getting an iPhone, an older one, and I've been checking on how to do the apps for them. So someday within the next year, hopefully I can start doing these for both Android and iPhone. But, uh, as you can see, that's all there is to it in here. We've got our little uh, Arduino Nano here. And right now I have a power plug. And then this is the output that goes to the camera. Um, you will want to use whatever plug that your camera uses. I use Canon so it uses these little plugs like this and uh, right now I've only got the short one. I've actually ordered a longer cable so that I can mount this on the tripod. But um, just make sure you use the connector appropriate for your camera. And then we've got the Bluetooth module and that's an HC06 and that's kind of buried down here on the side out of the way down here. Then we got a logic level converter because the Arduino runs on 5 volt logic and the HCL6 runs on 3.3, so we're using that. And I'll show you more about that in the schematic when we get to it here in a few moments. And then we've got uh, an optocoupler, also known as an optical isolator. And what this does is it allows the connection to our camera is not physically connected to this. What it does is there's a little infrared LED in there and a little infrared transistor. Some people call them infrared diodes. And when that light turns on inside there, which you can't see, it's all inside this little tiny chip, it lets the current flow through the other side. So there's no physical connection. You don't have to worry about frying your camera out. It uh, uses light to activate it. And you just got your two wires that come from the camera. Now, of course, there's three the other one's for focusing. I set this up, you're going to want your camera already focused. But uh, I didn't even see the need of adding a focusing button or anything. Just make sure your camera's focused before you use it. And another tip, if you build this and you set it up and the camera's not triggering, you probably got the two wires reversed because um, this only allows the current to flow in one direction. So you've got uh, 
your positive coming out of the camera, and that's somewhere around three to five volts, and then you got the ground. And when those are connected, it activates your trigger's remote shutter release. So if it's not working and the tone's going off and everything else is working, you probably just accidentally got these two wires reversed on the um, the optocoupler. And we'll go over that a little more when we get over the schematic in just a moment. Otherwise, that's all there is. Um, there's not much to this. There's a resistor in here because the uh, the optocoupler can only handle it's like two and a half volts, and the Arduino's putting out five. So we're just limiting the current to turn that LED on in here, which triggers the camera. Other than that, this is pretty simple, and there's almost no soldering required. It's just soldering your wires, your speaker, and your power connector, and your uh, if you put a connector on there to run to your shutter release. Otherwise, everything can be done on one of these little breadboards. It fits in one of these project boxes perfectly. All right. Um, well, I think that's all we need to go over with the unit itself. So I'm going to turn the computer on and bring up the schematic diagram. And we'll take a look at that, and I'll show you a little more in-depth on how this is all wired together. So I'll catch you over at the computer in just a moment. All right, I've got the schematic brought up here. Now, uh, before I forget, um, a copy of the schematic, um, the Arduino sketch, and the app can all be found on the website. Just look in the description below. And like I said, the app is a free download. And, you, and then you can print the schematic out for building it. And um, then the Arduino sketch, you just simply want to copy off of there and paste into the Arduino IDE and then upload it to the Arduino Nano. Now, if you don't know how anything about the Arduino Nanos and are interested in this, trust me, this is an easy project to put together. As long as you have some basic electronics understanding, you should be able to do this. And there's plenty of tutorials out there on how to load the sketch up onto the microcontroller itself. So I'm not going to go into that. But all right, well, let's just get right into it. Um, first off, I'm powering this, and I just got 9 volt there, and that goes to the VN. Then uh, <coughs> off the Arduino, we got our 5 volt out, and we're running that. So let's go over, let's go to the Bluetooth here first. This is an HCO6. Now there is also an HCO5, and that will work as well. That one just is a master and a slave, where the HCO6 is just a slave. If you get an HCO5 out of the box, it'll work. Um, if you were trying to use it as a, as a master in another project you're trying to do you do have to reprogram it otherwise out of the box it'll work the same as the hc06 then we got to our ground and our vcc on the the hc06 itself actually has to go to the 5 volts now the logic is 3.3 but it has to be powered by 5 so if you power it from the 3.3 volts from the arduino it will not work period it's not a maybe it just won't work then we got our logic level converter here. Now this is an 8 channel. In the project, um, I only used a 2. I have 2s, 4s, 8s. There's a bunch of them. Any of them will work. Um, I would try for this project to get a 2. Um, a 4, you'd probably still have enough room on that little breadboard. But if you've got an 8 channel, I don't think it's going to fit. But I already had this part made up because the editor I used to make the schematic doesn't have logic level converters, so I had to make this up myself. Now, as you can see, the TX comes in to number one, and it goes to the high volt out, and it goes to the RX. And remember that, the TX goes to the RX, and RX goes to the TX. You want them reversed so they can communicate with each other. And then just simply run them through the logic level converter, connect your grounds, and then you have your high voltage comes in, off the 5 volt and then the low voltage which is a reference so logic level converter knows what voltage to run goes to your 3.3 volt on the Arduino board. Now with that the only thing else we really have is the uh, this is a PC817 uh, this is made by Sharp it's the optical coupler optical isolator whatever you'd like to call it and then I have a 330 ohm resistor if you cannot find this particular part, which I'm going to 
say that's going to be doubtful. These are about the most common optocoupler there is, and they're extremely cheap. You'll, you should be able to find these. Others will work. Just make sure that you apply the proper resistor right here. But for the, the PC817, a uh, 330 ohm works fine. And then we covered about the camera if uh, it's not triggering, reverse your two wires. Now to find out which wires to connect coming off your camera, look in the owner's manual. In my Canon, it has it right in there. There's a little circuit diagram. It was like towards the back of the manual, if I remember right. But your Nikons and Sonys, all of them should have that in the instruction manual as well. Otherwise, if you don't have that or can't find it in the book, just look online. There's going to be tons of information. And you just want to have the ground and then the camera shutter trigger and just ignore the, uh, the focus. Just ignore that completely. And then just make sure your positive comes in so it runs through and then the, out to the ground. And it is it has to be set up directionally. If they're reversed, it won't work. Now, other than that, the only thing we had is I had a speaker on there, and that was optional. And that's just connected. Your positive side of the speaker would just connect here to digital pin 3. And then the negative side of the speaker just goes to ground. <coughs> and that's all there is to that. Um, I didn't bother rewriting the schematic because I already had this made up and then decided to put the speaker in. In the Arduino sketch, it has the tone on there, and you don't have to delete that if you're not going to use it. It's not going to affect this work, and if you don't have a speaker, will not affect it at all. All right. Well, with that, I think all oh, and uh, on the website as well. I said the, this schematic will be on there. I'll have this parts list, and I'll have some links to where to get this stuff if you don't already have it. So. Um, I think what we're going to do next is we'll go over to the, uh, the Arduino sketch, and I'll give a quick run-through on that. Um, there isn't really anything you're going to want to change on it. Otherwise, it's probably not going to function correctly with the app. But uh, if you're a builder and you're writing your own apps and you want to do a modified version of this, well, you'll probably want to stay tuned. And I'm just going to do a quick run-through of the code. Otherwise, you could probably just stop here and then go over to the website and get the schematic the parts list and uh, then just download the code and upload it to your Arduino board and leave everything alone. All right, uh, I'll catch you over at the Arduino IDE in just a second. Okay, I've got the Arduino IDE opened up here. And like I said just a few moments ago, I'm going to run through this super quick because, number one, it's not very complicated. And if you were going to be modifying this, you probably pretty much know what you're doing anyway. So let's just get right down to it. Uh, first, we have an integer here, and I just put that at DEL, and that stands for delay. And what this is doing is it's storing the delay value that uh, the app is sending to the uh, Arduino board. Then we're defining which um, pin is going to be for triggering the camera, and we're on 10. And we're setting the pin mode for that as an output, and then we're starting our serial, and I'm running 9600. Uh, let's scroll down here a little. Then an avoid loop. Um, <clears throat> I send two-byte numbers from my apps but um, the Arduino only receives a one byte. So this little formula right here is converting that, uh, those, that two byte number that's coming in so that um, the Arduino can understand it. So I'm not gonna go into how it works. Um, like I said, if you're gonna be modifying this, you probably already know what you're doing anyway. I just like to use two byte numbers because I can send lots bigger values from my apps to the, uh, the Arduino boards. So then we have here, if the value is between 0 and 10,000, it applies that received value to the delay, which is setting our trigger delay for how long after you hit take the picture button for the camera to actually take a picture. So then we got the else if, the value equals, and I just put 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. 
and if it receives that, then it triggers and starts and it goes and does the delay function first. So it takes that delay value and delays that long. Then it digitally writes the camera high, delays 50, digitally writes the camera low, delays 100, and then it does the tone for one second. That's all there is to it. So I think we can go ahead and uh, wrap this tutorial up. If you found the information useful, uh, please give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. Um, please subscribe. I do lots of videos on Arduinos and MIT App Inventor, and I do some occasional photography videos, and I like to combine all three. Those are the videos I have the most fun doing. So with that, thank you for joining us here at the Z-Hut today. And remember, have fun building.